I grew up in South Africa during the apartheid era where I did not have the right to vote. I could not determine my future based on who I wanted to represent me. And so, sadly, I have never had the opportunity to vote in South Africa, but I do have the opportunity to vote in the United States. I am married to an American woman. I'm an American citizen. And Darlene and I make sure that we do not miss a presidential or a midterm cycle to vote. But I've had the opportunity to work with some incredible leaders, world leaders, state leaders, municipal leaders. And in our travels around the globe, meeting different people, we've really come to understand how different societies function. For example, Dali and I spent some time in Morocco. And Morocco is a monarch uh, structure. They have a king. And yes, they have a parliament with senators and uh, Congress people and entire voting uh, component. But really, the key decisions always come and become rested upon the king. So recently in Morocco, the teachers felt that they were being underpaid. And the teachers in Morocco went on strike. And Morocco doesn't have the best education structure. And the teachers really felt that they were not being valued. And the king allowed the strike to take place. But he's very progressive. And he allowed the politicians to debate how to fix the problem. And then eventually he said, enough's enough. And he stepped in. And he said to the teachers, I'm going to give you a pay raise. But here's the conditions. And he could set those conditions because he is king. And he said, firstly, all of you no longer have a job. He technically fired all the teachers in Morocco. And then he said, now you can reapply for your job and here are the new standards. And should you meet these new standards, you will get the pay you're asking for. But if you cannot meet these standards, you're going to find another job because I will find other teachers. So what the politicians couldn't fix, the king did. And now they have a stronger education system. But it doesn't always work that way because democracy isn't about somebody dictating what you can and cannot do. South Africa, under apartheid, was a form of dictatorship because only a certain group of people had the power, not all people. And so it's really important to understand that you have to be informed. You have to understand who are the people representing you and what do they stand for. And so I'm in a privileged position having worked with the National League of Cities at so many different meetings across so many different states. And I saw so many folks who didn't subscribe to one party or another party. They subscribed to one ideology. They wanted the best for their community. They didn't care if they were Republican or Democrat. They all lived in the same town, in the same city. And those who were committed to those communities tried to find a way to solve the problems. Not to point fingers, not to point blame, not to try and tear each other down, but to pick up a community. But somehow, we also lose that sense when we come into partisan politics, of where certain people feel that they are right. They feel that their vote is more important. We've got to move beyond the entity of partisan politics. I've got to start looking and saying, what are good ideas? What are the ideas that represent all of us? How do we pick each other up? We have to really look at infrastructure. We have to really look at taxation. We have to look at healthcare. Because this impacts every single individual, no matter where you live on the planet. And it impacts your happiness. And so, in my understanding of life in some of the Scandinavian countries, they score very high on the happiness index, but they also pay some of the highest taxes. And they have a very different attitude. They see taxation as an investment. They don't see it as a liability. They see it as a collective, and that they have political leaders who represent them collectively, not individually. And they try to hold those leaders feet to a fire. And they form multiple parties, and they have to form coalitions to be able to govern. So we really have to start looking and saying, how do we want to be governed? What are the implications 
of the society that we want to live in? And who are the people who's going to help us achieve that society? By which rules are we going to apply? How are we going to hold each other accountable? How are we going to hold our leaders accountable? It's a very personal conversation. But I think it's an important conversation we have to have on a global level as well. Because we are dealing with climate impacts. We are dealing with climate change. We are dealing with wars, whether it's Ukraine war, or whether it's the war uh, in Palestine against the, uh, with the Israelis, or whether it's in my next door neighborhood on the island of Hispaniola, Haiti. We are in a period of conflict. Who creates these conflicts? Man, mankind. When we lose our kindness, we forget what we are, who we are, and how we have to come together. We can do better than we are doing today. There is no excuse, there is no reason why we cannot look and say, we may disagree, but let's find common ground where we can agree and let's work together towards that agreement. Because that agreement is our safety net. That agreement is our stability. That agreement is our economy. If we don't find a way to come together, if we don't find a way to work with all politicians from all different aisles and all different philosophies and beliefs to find a common goal, then we will lose our planet. We will lose our democracy. The one system that does work is the democratic system where we all have a voice, but that doesn't mean we have to shout and we have to be the loudest voice. That means we have to find the agreements. So I challenge you, don't sit out political change, don't sit out elections, but look into your heart and look into the soul of others. Read, become informed. Start to understand the difference between misinformation and truth and question, truly question, because there's always an agenda. What is that agenda? Who are these folks serving? Are they truly serving you and me? And are we truly looking out for each other? Or is it about the next tax break or the next manipulation or the next corruption? If you allow this to continue, we will not have a planet because we have big challenges as a human species, as one life form of a major life form of others on this planet, the plants and the other animals in this kingdom. We've got to come together and lay down a strong foundation for future generations. We've inherited big challenges from our parents, our grandparents and our ancestors. They do not have necessarily the knowledge that we have today. They couldn't talk to you as I'm talking to you right now. But because we have this technology, let us be smart, let us be sensible, let us be informed. Let us work together to make this a better world not just for ourselves, but for all life on this planet, especially life to come.